Today, we're going to be fine-tuning our own large language model using some hand-annotated test data, and this is going to be in the psychology domain. Our large language model is going to learn to match sentences by similarity. We're going to train this model for a tool called Harmony, which is a web-based tool in the psychology domain that allows researchers to compare questionnaire items and understand the semantic similarity between those items as a percentage value. Harmony is based on an underlying large language model which is a standard multilingual LLM from Hugging Face. Since Harmony's large language model is not a psychology-specific large language model, we'd like to fine-tune one for the particular domain that we want it for. You can find out more about this at harmonydata.ac.uk slash doxa. This is actually a competition we're running on a platform called Doxa AI. Let's get started. I'm going to install all my dependencies. I'm going to need pandas, I need transformers, and I needed sentence transformers from Hugging Face with a training add-on. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do some more imports. I'm going to put import pandas. I'm going to then get our training data. There we are. So we've got our training data. We're going to open it and we'll have a look inside. So inside our data frame, we've got 2,351 rows, and we've got sentence one, we've got sentence two, we've got the human annotated similarity value. This is our ground truth. This is what we want our model to be predicting. Okay, let's use scikit-learn, and we're gonna split this into a train set and a test set. Okay, let's have a look inside the train and the test data set. So one thing we've got to do is just reset the index, otherwise this will mess everything up once we import everything in, into Hugging Face. So we've now done this reset. And now we've got our data set in the Hugging Face format. Let's do the same for the test data set. And now we're going to import Hugging Face sentence transformers. We'll have a look and we'll see which Hugging Face model we want to use. Here we can see there's a number of mental health models on, on the Hugging Face hub. We're going to find MPNet, so that's not a mental health domain or psychology domain specific model, it's just a generic um, multilingual model. Let's see if we can find this one. We're going to start with this model, so we're going to fine tune from this large language model that's, that somebody else has already made. I'm going to copy its name, and this is going to be the model that we're going to start with. Let's have a look inside. We can see that it's a sentence transformer model and the dimension is 768. So this turns English sentences or any text into a vector of dimension 768. We're now going to import all the training libraries and we're going to use a loss function. We can use the cosine similarity a loss. A loss function in machine learning is just a number that you want to make as small as possible. The smaller it is, the better your model is. So in our case, we have our training data, we have the similarity values that human experts consider sentences to be to one another. We're going to get the output of our model and the closer the cosine similarity is between vectors that our model produces to the human defined similarity values, the smaller the loss function will be and the better our model will be. So we're defining how our model should be trained. We're gonna run it for three epochs and we've given the loss function. And now we're going to run the training. So this takes about 10 minutes on a basic computer. I'll fast forward it now. While the model is training, luckily Jupyter Notebook will display a progress bar um, and the loss function of our model is being calculated and logged and also 
periodically snapshots of the model are going to be saved to disk. So if everything crashes, you haven't lost anything. So in my case, I only did three epochs. And in reality, you'd play with a number of parameters in the training and, ex and experiment iteratively to get the best result. OK, so now the training has finished. And um, we've got 500 steps in. Let's see what, what we can do with it now. So here's our model. And we can test the encoding. So I'm going to pass an arbitrary sentence into our model. And our model is going to turn that into a vector in 768 dimensions. And obviously, if you pass two sentences into this model, then those vectors, if the sentences are semantically similar, those vectors should be close together in this 768 dimensional space. So my test data set has 588 rows. And for each of those rows, we've got a sentence number one and sentence number two. So I'm going to encode all the sentence ones, all the 588 sentence ones, and all the sentence twos into a set of embeddings. So I will get two arrays of length 588 and the width is the dimensionality of our I can see um, now what is the cosine similarity between the two sentences. Here's the first sentence encoded. It's 768 dimensions, as we'd expect. That's the encoding of the first sentence. Now, let's use a cosine similarity function. I've just copy-pasted this from the Harmony library. There's a link in the description. The cosine similarity, we'll put that in a matrix. And the shape is 588 by 588. So that's because we have 588 uh, questions in our test data set. We can check an entry in the similarity matrix. So the top left entry, the 0, 0 entry, is the similarity of sentence number 1 to sentence number 2 in the top row of our test data set. So this is the first entry in our test data set that would correspond to here, sentence number 1 versus sentence number 2. We can now put the similarity value back into the test data set. And then this is our predicted similarity. And we can compare the predicted similarity to the actual score, which was our ground truth, which is what we're aiming to predict. Now we can start to quantify the performance of our model. So you can see now I've got the column score. This was the ground truth. This is the human annotated similarity value between the two sentences, and I've got y underscore pred, which is the cosine similarity which has come out of the model that we have just trained. So already now, we can do things like we can work out the residual, i.e. the difference between the predicted value and the ground truth for each of the, and, and put that into the data frame. And we can work out the mean value of the residual, we can work out the mean squared, error, all these values we can work out. Now that you've trained your model, what you can do is you can follow the link in the description to submit your model to the Doxa AI Harmony competition. And um, this isn't just constrained to the psychology domain. For example, I'm working on a project where we are matching lay people's legal queries to legislation from the English and Welsh Insolvency Act 1986. And that's something, another case where you need domain-specific tech similarity matching. Um, you can visit my website to find out more about how you can calculate the similarity between do, two documents and other ways of getting document similarity, semantic similarity, and other techniques such as knife bays and uh, the jacquard similarity index.